guys, welcome back to my channel. If you are new here, welcome. My name is Jennifer Jenkins. Thank you so much for stopping by. In today's video, I'm gonna share with you my morning skincare routine. It is the reason that I come to you barefaced from my bathroom. Actually, this is the guest bathroom. Um, I, I was trying to film in my master bathroom, but I could not get the lighting right. For whatever reason, I've got a big window in there and it just really messes up the lighting. So my screen was really dim and the video was really dim and I, I just could not figure it out. I tried every different setting possible, but anyway, so we're in here, the lighting's a little bit different, but it's just going to have to do. So, um, so yeah, I'm bare face. I do have on some mascara, I should admit. Um, and you know, that's just kind of a confidence thing, but, um, but it's not going to interfere, you know, with skincare application. So, you know, I didn't think it was that big of a deal. I should probably also mention my eyebrows. I, um, retattooed them about three weeks ago. If you're new to my channel, then you should probably know that several years ago I tattooed my own eyebrows and every year or year and a half, um, I have to touch them up because they fade quite a bit. And usually I go just a tad bit thicker. So I did go a little baby bit thicker. And, um, and so, yeah, that's what we're doing right now, but they do look very intense. I do realize that I know somebody's going to mention the color and I should have gone lighter and stuff like that. I'm not interested in going, to, you know, with a lighter color. Whenever I was younger, I had very jet black eyebrows and they were very thick, like Oscar the Grouch. And, um, and then I, you know, way over plucked because of, because I was a little obsessed with Pamela Anderson. And so, um, I wanted to look just like her. So I plucked, you know, my eyebrows to oblivion and, and now I have to tattoo them. So anyway, um, I'm just used to seeing myself with a really dark eyebrow and I prefer a really bold brow anyway. Like I said, these are really intense right now. They are going to lighten up a lot, but I love it because I already have a base, you know, um, whenever I shower or um, go swimming or something like that, I get out and it looks like I already have, you know, eyebrows on. And now that I've gone this dark, because my natural hairs that are still remaining are like jet black, I can't even, I had to get so close to the mirror to see the difference between where my hairs stop and like where the tattoo starts. And so, um, so anyway, I don't mind that. Like I said, it, it just creates a really perfect base so I can just put on some like lighter, um, eyebrow powder and it's just perfect. So anyway, that was totally off subject, but I just wanted to kind of mention that cause I know somebody's going to be like, Whoa, those eyebrows. And just in case somebody wants um, a close up on my eyebrows, cause I would probably want a close up like that. Um, this is what I'm talking about. Like there is my natural hair. I did trim them just recently on the inside. Um, and then there's the tattoo. I don't know if you could even tell, you know, where it stops and where it, um, where it starts and where it stops. But, um, so my natural eyebrows are really, you know, very dark. So, I feel like it just, um, like I can't even tell. I'm just like, I can't, I can't even tell unless I get right close up with like a magnifying mirror and I'm like, oh, okay. So that's what I wanted because before I did have a lighter brown and I could tell exactly. But like I said, these are gonna lighten up too. So anyway. Okay, so whenever I am putting together a morning skincare routine, there are certain things, certain ingredients that I always want to include. And the first one is some sort of exfoliant. Um, I want to remove all those dead skin cells that are sitting on the surface of my skin so that whatever products and whatever ingredients I put on my skin, they're able to penetrate to where they need to be in order to do any type of repair. You know, so you want to remove those dead skin cells so that your skincare can, you know, do its job. So I always start with an exfoliant. Another thing that I always want to include are antioxidants. Antioxidants are really good at just defending our skin against environmental stresses like pollution, um, smoke, um, even air, damaging sun rays, you know, things of that nature. Um, they also just go in and just scavenge free radicals. So they kind of stop them in their tracks before they can, you know, wreak havoc on your skin. So I always like to include antioxidants. Another ingredient that I always like to include are emollients. Um, emollients just kind of go in there, fill in all the cracks and just leave your skin just feeling nice 
and smooth and soft. I also like to include humectants because humectants are water binding. So they are going to draw water to themselves and they're just gonna attract moisture to the surface of your skin where you apply you know, humectants and they're just gonna keep your skin just really nice and hydrated and moisturized. And then the last thing that I like to put on my skin is some sort of thick, creamy, occlusive, um, moisturizer. I want to just lock all of those wonderful ingredients that I just applied to my skin. I want to lock all those in under my makeup and um, I want to prevent, you know, any moisture from escaping or any, you know, epidermal water loss. And so I always end my morning skincare with a thicker, um, you know, really nice thick moisturizer. Okay. So like I said, I want to start with some sort of exfoliant. So this is what I'm using right now. This is a 10% glycolic acid serum. It's made by Advanced Clinicals. Y'all, this one is so, so good. It's so mild, but it's so effective. It includes glycolic acid, salicylic acid, lactic acid, and then it also includes an ingredient called phytic acid that's supposed to just help calm the skin, you know, especially since you're using so many different acids. But like I said, it's so mild and so effective. It does have a really slight fragrance. However, because I'm not about to put fragrance, you know, regular fragrance on my skin, but um, I looked at the ingredients, of course, and I took every ingredient and looked it up on the Paula's Choice ingredient list because that's what I always do. And the three ingredients that are actually creating that scent are apple, blueberry, and pomegranate. And all three of those are actually rated best on Paula's Choice ingredient um, list, you know, best for your skin, of course. And so those are the three that are making up that it's a really, really light scent, but it's, it's, um, it's a really nice one. So the way that I apply this is I just take a whole dropper and, um, I put it in the palm of my hand and then I just kind of rub it together and put it all over my entire face. I do always take it up under my eyes too. Occasionally, maybe every second or third time, I'll put it on my eyelids also because I feel like that skin also, you know, needs to be, we need to increase the rate of cell turnover. They're also in glycolic acid is really good at that. So let's go ahead and put some on. I think I'm going to need a little bit more because I do um, put it on my neck and my chest also. So, and it has a lot of slip to it. So it's really, really easy to apply. Oh, that smell is so, it's just so pleasant. <laughs> Now I definitely need a little bit more for my chest. You know, up until I was about 38 or so, I always neglected my chest and my neck. I just totally ignored them. So silly, I'm so mad at myself for that. So if you're watching and you're young, don't do that because you know, you want, you don't want, you want the skin on your face to match the skin on your neck. <laughs> Okay, first of all, y'all, you have got to get to the dollar store and get one of these. Um, they're a dollar twenty-five. They've, you know, they've raised their prices. This is like highway robbery, right? I'm just kidding. But um, they're perfect for, you know, applying your skincare, especially if you layer and then you, you know, have to sit there and wait for it to dry or whatever. You can just kind of fan it. And especially like right now, I can feel it. It's tingling a little bit, but it's not stinging or it's not burning. I can see that my skin is getting a little bit pink. But it's not, um, like there's one that I started using recently, a glycolic acid. It's made by Neutrogena. It's only a 7% um, solution for whatever reason. Whoa, my face reacts like it does when I um, use my 50, 50% glycolic acid. I'm like, wow. Real quick, or I don't know if this is gonna be real quick, but while my glycolic acid is kind of sinking in, um, I just wanted to say one of the reasons, aside from, you know, it shedding the dead skin cells off the surface of the skin, um, which I feel like really preps your skin to just receive all the ingredients that you're about to put on it, but it also triggers skin cell turnover. And that's what we want to do, especially as we age. We want to incorporate ingredients that help our skin cells turn over at a much faster rate. Literally every skin care issue that you might have, especially when it comes to aging, can be improved by increasing the rate at which your skin cells turn over. Just to give you an example, when we are babies, 
our skin cells turn over at a rate of about three to five days. So a skin cell is born and it takes about three to five days to reach the surface of the skin. So that brand new skin cell that's light reflecting and plump and moist and you know retaining a lot of water, that's on the surface of infant's skin, which is why their skin is so moist and plump and light reflecting. As we age, that process really slows down. So by the time you're my age, I'm 49 years old, it takes anywhere from 45 to 90 days for a skin cell to turn over. So if we use products that help to increase the rate of skin cell turnover, then our skin cells are going to act and behave and look a lot younger. You know, you don't want a traffic jam of dead skin cells on the surface of your skin. Once those skin cells reach the surface, they die, they harden, all of a sudden you have textured skin, you have dry skin, you have dull skin, it's not light reflecting, um, it's not retaining any moisture, so, you know, it's just, you know, like I said, it's dull and dry and, and textured. In addition, your lines and your hyperpigmentation, if you have some, are gonna look worse. Your lines are going to look deeper. Your hyperpigmentation is going to look darker because all of those, you know, um, all of those dark cells that have clumped together on the surface, now they're piling up on each other. So they're just going to look darker. So we just want to get rid of all of that so that our skin, like I said, so it looks and behaves younger. So the next thing that I put on my skin directly after my glycolic acid is this right here. And um, if you've been with my channel, you've seen it before. It's a DIY that I created several years ago and I have just been using it ever since. I never go without it. I use it every single day. Now, as you can see, there is some separation there. This down here is aloe vera juice. Um, this is the aloe vera juice that I'm using right now. It's made by Lily of the Desert and it's Interfilet. Sometimes I do switch out the aloe vera juice. I might try out different brands, but I really like this one. Um, now, what's creating that yellow color, obviously these are oils up here. What's creating the yellow color is this from The Ordinary. It is 100% organic cold pressed rosehip seed oil. And rosehip seed oil is um, an emollient, so it's going to go in there and just fill in the cracks and leave my skin looking nice and smooth and soft. And I put two droppers, two full droppers in this bottle. Now another oil that I have in here is this. I picked this up at the dollar store. It's a vitamin E beauty oil. It actually has vitamin E glycerin, coconut oil, and soybean oil. Now vitamin E is an antioxidant, so it's going to defend our skin against environmental factors. Um, it also has emollient and humectant properties. So not only is it going to fill in the cracks and leave our skin you know, feeling nice and soft and smooth, um, it's also going to attract moisture to the surface of our skin so that our skin looks really nice and hydrated. Now the coconut oil and the soybean oil that is in here are both emollients. Um, but they're also rich in triglycerides, so they're also both very good for the skin. And then the last oil that I have in this DIY is castor oil. This is one that always remains the same. Sometimes I switch out the other oils, but this castor oil always remains the same. Now this is cold pressed, 100% solvent free castor oil. Now castor oil also has emollient and humectant properties, but it also contains antioxidants and it also contains fatty acids. So all of those things are so good for our skin. And so those are just all the things that make up this little DIY. And I feel like I took so much time to explain that. But anyway, so the way that I use this is I just shake it up really, really good and really, really hard. I spray it into my hand and then I just apply it very, very liberally all over my face, my eyes, my neck, my chest, just everywhere. And I did want to mention also that I keep all of my, almost all of my skincare, not the cleansers, in my refrigerator. So they're always nice and chilled and I just love that. It makes it so refreshing to put on my skin. Um, and so yeah. If you don't do that, you should try it, especially your eye creams. Oh my gosh, it's so refreshing to put on really chilled, you know, eye creams. Now one thing that I did want to say about this DIY is that even though there's a lot of oils in it, it does not dry really oily and really greasy um, because of the aloe vera. I feel like the aloe vera just kind of, I don't know, makes it dry down really nicely and I feel like it's perfect to put as your first, it's like a serum. It has the consistency of a very slippery, you know, serum and I just love it. However, 
If you are acne prone, you might avoid the coconut oil because I think coconut oil can aggravate, um, you know, some people with acne, not everyone, but I know it can um, aggravate some, some people with acne. So I would just leave that one out, but I think everything else is good for, for anybody, you know, whether you have acne or not, especially if you have sensitive skin, this is so good, it's so nice. Okay, the next thing that I'm gonna put on my skin is this right here. It's a 2% concentration of hyaluronic acid by Revolution Skincare. And this does have a little bit of a tacky feel to it. Sometimes I will just add this with my DIY in, in the palm of my hand and then just put it on all together. But, um, but I'm just putting it on separately right now. I don't know why. Sometimes I do put it on separately, but usually I just add it with that. And again, it just has a lot of slip. And yeah, just pat it in, rub it on. Okay, so the next thing that I'm gonna put on my face right now is my eye creams. And this is what I'm using right now. This is something that's been in my rotation for so long, probably four years or so. And it is made by Eva Naturals and it's a firming eye gel. I keep this in my refrigerator. When I put it on my eyes, it is so refreshing. It's so, so nice. However, occasionally, sometimes I don't feel like it's as moisturizing as I would like. So I will add something that's a little bit more moisturizing, a little bit more creamy um, to it, and then it's perfect. This is what I'm adding to it right now. This is from Paula's Choice. This is C5 Super Boost Eye Cream. It contains 5% stable vitamin C, hyaluronic acid, and a polypeptide. Now this was actually sent to me. This video is not, um, is not sponsored or anything like that. I have not communicated with Paula's Choice at all. They actually sent me several products. This one is something that I can't stop using. I love it so much. This is so creamy. It's so luxurious, it's so silky, and I love it paired with this. The only downside to this is that it's $39. I don't know what it is. Like, I I don't mind spending, for an eye cream, 30 or below. Whenever it starts going up above 30, I'm like, oh, come on, because you get so little, you know? Actually, how much is this? This is um, 0.5 fluid ounces. I don't know, you know, $39 is not totally unreasonable. I just wish it were below. $30. So anyway, it's really, really nice. I'm going to go ahead and mix them together. Now, one thing that I really like about this is I feel like it's really brightening me up right in here. This is where I have my discoloration. I think you can see like right there, it's like a bluish color. And then of course, right in here, I think a lot of us have that, especially as we age. And so um, this is really helping to kind of brighten that up. Now, what I do is I I put a little pump. One thing I love about this pump is you have total control over how much comes out. You know, that's how much I want. This one you don't have as much of control over. However, this is a lot cheaper. <laughs> See, so that's how much comes out in there. I just kind of mix um, most of this with all of this and then I apply it to my eyes. Whatever I have left over, because I always do, I always put it on my forehead or I'll put it here even though I don't really have lines, but I am getting these little like, see that, like that. So I'll put it there too. But y'all, this Paula's Choice eye cream, it is so nice. Like I said, I have not communicated with Paula's Choice at all. They just sent all these things to me and I'm sure they were hoping that I would like it and make a video. Like I said, I've got like four or five other products, you know, and I'll probably tell you about them in an upcoming video and tell you what I think about them. Um, I think that was nice that they sent it to me. Oh, I love this stuff. I can already feel it like tightening. Um, I think that's the gel part and then the Creamy Paula's Choice just gives it like the perfect consistency. Okay, so this is the last product that I put on my skin before my sunscreen. And this is made by e.l.f. and it's called Pure Skin. It's a moisturizer and it contains oat milk, ceramides, and niacinamide. Y'all, this cream is very rich. It's pretty thick. You know, you have to um, put it on a certain way, um, but I love it so much. It locks everything in. It actually leaves you with a really nice matte finish. I prefer a matte finish. Now, I did want to say that our lipid layer is made up of three components. It's made up of cholesterol, ceramides, and fatty acids. 
This has all three. So um, one thing that I do whenever I'm looking for skincare is I'm always looking for skincare that's going to restore or replenish you know, things that are naturally found in my skin. So I love this cream so much. Now, the way that I put it on is I put about five pumps in my hand. I rub it together really, really good so that it's really white on my hands like that. And then I just start patting it. And like I said, it has such a matte finish. You know, somebody had left me a comment saying, um, I'm surprised that you like that product because, I don't know, I guess apparently other influencers had said that no, they didn't really like it because it was too hard to apply and they felt like it was just sitting on the surface of the skin. And y'all, I don't mind that. <laughs> like, I am like, okay, I want it to sit there on the surface of the skin. I want it to lock all my moisture in. And like I said, it wears so well under makeup. As we age, y'all, we should really be concentrating on keeping that moisture in our skin. That is going to be, you know, our best friend. Moisture is our best friend, you know, as we age. So as you can see, you know, I just pat it all in and um, I didn't find it difficult at all. Um, now, like I said, I can feel it sitting on the surface of my skin, but as long as it wears well under makeup, I don't mind. Now, I do not put it on my eyelids because I feel like it's a little bit too heavy for my eyelids, but I don't mind the rest of my skin feeling taut, you know, because that's what it feels like right now. So, um, so yeah, so the last thing that I apply is my sunscreen. And this is my favorite. Um, this is made by Color Science. It's Sun Forgettable Total Protection Face Shield. It's an SPF of 50. And I like it because, you know, it's a zinc oxide. Now I did want to say, uh, and I know somebody's going to be upset with me for having said this. I do not wear sunscreen every single day. I, if I'm going to be indoors, I'm not going to put on sunscreen just because I have windows in my house. Um, I don't even put on sunscreen if I'm just going to the grocery store that's a five minute drive and back, you know? Um, I, I, I'm just, I don't know, that's just not, I just don't do it. Um, and you know, I know that that's not a popular thing to say, but I don't. However, if I'm going to be out in the sun more than like 20 minutes, or if I am um, traveling, you know, and, you know, we're traveling to another city and it's a two hour drive or something like that, I'm definitely, definitely going to put on sunscreen. Um, but day to day, I don't always put it on. And um, so I apologize if that upsets anybody. So when I do use it, this is what I use. And I like it because the main active ingredient is zinc oxide and it's my favorite to use as a sunscreen. I cannot use titanium dioxide, unfortunately, because I have developed some sort of, I don't know, allergic reaction or something to titanium dioxide. If it's the main ingredient in any product, the main active ingredient, I break out in a rash with teeny tiny little pimples like everywhere. And it takes about three or four days for them to go away. And it's very uncomfortable and it, you know, it's unsightly. I don't like it. So this one, the main ingredients is zinc oxide. So I like it. So let me show you how I apply it. I mean, it's not, it's not rocket science, but I just wanted to show you that, you know, it comes out white like that, but when you put it on your skin, it actually turns to just a really pretty, like, um, you know, kind of a tan or skin color. So zinc oxide already blurs things anyway. And then to have that little hint of color, just, I don't know. I think, you know, that's obviously why it's my favorite. Now, this is another one that I kind of like to, you know, pat in. So, um, but it's kind of hard for me to pat it in on my forehead because then I get it on my eyebrows and everything else. The only thing that kind of upsets me about this is that it says that it dries down um, matte, but I don't find that to be true. I mean, as you can see right now, it's very shiny. And to me, you know, some people like that. They think it makes them look like, you know, they have a healthy glow or something like that. To me, it just makes me feel like I look greasy or oily. And the one con I think to this also is that although it wears okay under makeup, like it doesn't pill or anything like that, um, I have to repowder like 10 times a day. Like this oily look or this shiny look just keeps coming through my makeup all day long. And I do not like that. So, um, so I don't mind like wearing it on my neck or my chest because like I said, it does have a hint of color and it does kind of blur things like blur all those, 
you know, sunspots that you saw earlier. And because it's light reflecting, you know, the skin is really tight there. So I'm not worried about that. It's right up in here, you know, around your eyes and stuff that I feel like light reflecting isn't necessarily a, a friend of, you know, aging skin. So this right here just took all that tautness away that I just had on my skin from um, from the e.l.f. moisturizer. So now it actually feels like I don't have much on at all. Now I did want to say, um, again, you saw how many things I put on. None of this stuff, like I can rub my skin really, really hard. None of it pills. It's just, it just keeps my face so moist and so supple and I love it. Um, you know, I do love the way that this looks as far as, um, like I said, it has a little bit of coverage. I just wish it wasn't so shiny. I wish it would, I wish it would dry down matte like it says it's supposed to. So that is all I have for you today. Thank you so much for hanging out with me. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. As always, I'm going to have links to everything that I showed you in this video in my description box below. I'm also going to pin it to the top of my comment section, just so it's a little bit easier for you to find, especially if you're on a phone. So thank you so much for being here. I hope you're having a fantastic work week or a fantastic weekend, depending on when you see this video. And hopefully I will see you back here next week.